Hello everyone, welcome back to Major Views. My name is Davina Thomas and this is the show where we help you figure out what you want to do with your life. We go behind the scenes of each major and help you figure out what you want to major in as soon as you get to college. Today, our major that we're covering today is Digital Broadcasting Arts and I'm here with Dean Goss. Hello. Hello. Welcome. Thank you. <laughs> so first of all, tell us what your title is. My title? Um, Everything. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> My title, I'm, I'm adjunct professor mm -hmm. at Palomar College in uh, Media Studies, which is radio and television okay. and film. Yes. And I heard, I did some research on Google and I found out that you are a disc jockey as well. Yes. What exactly is That's a disc jockey? That's the radio portion. Okay. Yeah. What do they do? What's their responsibilities? Uh, well, quite a few responsibilities. Mm -hmm. You're the host of a radio show at a radio station and it's usually a formatted station. Uh, some stations are hip-hop, some stations are country, some stations are called AC, adult contemporary, mm -hmm. some stations are rock, some stations are classic rock, some stations are classic hits, and some stations are talk. So it depends upon the format that you're working at, but you're the host of anywhere between four to five, sometimes even six hours a day of a show. Is it fun? Do you do you, how do how much do you enjoy your job? I can honestly tell you, it's been forty some odd years. <laughs> I've never had a job. Mm -hmm. I've never worked. I've never had to work. Yeah. In other words, it's never felt like a job. Yeah. So I've always enjoyed it. Yeah. Where do you work at now? Where? At KSON, mm -hmm. which is a country station. That's yeah. country format, new country, yeah. and uh, it's in San Diego. Nice. And, it's a good, great format. I love the music. Yes. Okay. Good. Keeps me young. <laughs> As you can see. No. Okay. So what? Are, <laughs> what are the skills needed in order to do your job? Well, as a host, you have to be very good at self-editing, because you only have a limited amount of time when you're actually talking on the radio. Quite often, you're talking over the intro of songs, because uh, people tune into music stations for music, number one. And then number two, hopefully they enjoy the personality and, and they'll learn something from the uh, jock on the air. So you have to be able to self-edit. In other words, uh, I always call it one thought per set. If, uh, if When you open your mic, know what you're gonna say, know what you're gonna talk about, know how it's gonna start and how it's gonna end. So you have to, you have to edit yourself. Sometimes you have to do things over 17 seconds Sometimes you'll talk for four seconds. Sometimes you'll talk for maybe a minute, depending. So is improv very important in this career? <laughs> improv is important when something goes wrong, yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> improv is very important when things go wrong because you have to be able to think quick on your feet and because sometimes you will expect the music to be there and there's a technical problem with the computer and the music's not there, the audience doesn't know that. Only you know that because you're expecting the music, you know? Right. And the audience has no idea that they, if, they, if they don't hear the music, they're not expecting it, so they don't know. So you have to ad-lib until you can fix that problem. Are you the only one in the studio at a time? Okay. And sometimes, depends on the shift, how late at night the shift is. Absolutely, and most of the time you're in. Yeah, you're you're in there alone because you're not really supposed to have anyone in there distracting you because you have to pay attention, answer the phones, talk to your audience, and and so yeah, you have to you have to concentrate, and it can be tiring. You do that for four or five hours straight. It can be tiring, yeah. even though you're not physically running and moving around. I'm doing stuff. You're staying usually in one little area like this. But you're busy because you're constantly thinking. And you think, gee, you get to listen to the radio all the time. Well, that's not true. I know the beginning. I know the 10 seconds of every song and the last 10 seconds of every song. In between, I don't know. Because I turn it down because I'm talking about what I'm going to do next. <laughs> I'm not lit literally listening to the radio going, oh, that's kind of fun. Oh, the song's over. Oh, i got to do something here. Right. You know, so you're always thinking about what you're going to do next. Yeah. Now, I know your family, everyone, almost everyone in the family, even your daughters-in-laws, are yes. in the in entertainment business. Yes, they're in the industry. What is something new that you've learned from them, from your family in general, from your wife, your sons, your daughters-in-law? 
Wow. Buster. Hey, Buster. <laughs> what What have I learned from them? It's um. You have to stay on top of things. You have to be well, well read and stay on top of technology. I know my son that uh, is manager of Netflix Original Productions. He says, and if if he could tell if he could tell you one thing to do, learn code. <laughs> That's what he would say. Mm -hmm. Learn code, meaning code is the new language. Code is the language of the future. Code is what creates the internet. Code is what creates apps. And the future is going to be so digitally driven that if you're if you're up on code, that's where that's that is the worldwide language everyone will speak because it's code that made these. It's it's code that makes every app. It's code that makes every website. It's code that makes everything digital, mm -hmm. and that's that's a language that you yeah you need to know. Yeah. Difficult, geeky, mathematics, yeah, but it's a it's a, it it's the future. Mm -hmm. Code is the future, and and it's not as it's not as difficult as it used to be. You know, 10, 15 years ago when it was just starting. So if you can learn code, I'd, I'd take a few classes in code, just so so you understand that that's the language that geeks talk. Okay, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's Bill Gates and Steve Jobs and 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 the people that run Netflix and Amazon and Google. It's all code, and that's a language. It's just a language. So now I know you did um, a game show. Game show yes. for a host. That's yes. like a deal. Yes. Now, TV versus radio. Which do you like more? Or is there something? I someone... absolutely loved television. Yeah. And the reason I loved doing television, uh, I did Let's Make a Deal in the 80s. And I know that uh, it's back now on CBS with. Um, What's his name? I can't think of his name. Right, Wayne, Wayne Brady. Brady. Yeah. Brady. Wayne Brady. Yeah, <laughs> there he is. With, with Wayne Brady. And what I loved about television was there, there were 100, literally 100 people behind the camera helping you look great. And that's exactly what it is. American Idol, there's 100 people working in the background to make Ryan Seacrest look great. So that's a great feeling. Yeah. It's a real it's a really a cool feeling. Yeah. Okay, so what is your biggest regrets from the industry? Um I I made a few decisions that uh, I had to I had to make them for uh, for family reasons. I didn't want to I didn't want to disrupt my kids, and I'm I'm glad I didn't. I mean, it's kind of a, a catch-22. Uh, I turned down some opportunities in New York, and I turned down some opportunities in Atlanta that would have been tons and tons of money, but it also would have messed up my kids, you know, and my kids have turned out to be so awesome that it's worth it. But... Yeah, I mean, yeah, sure. There's there's some regrets, but it's it's just you, you make those decisions and and you say, okay, I'm gonna make this decision. I'm gonna live with it. And, and at times, it's almost like, gosh, I wish. I think back, boy, it would have been fun to do New York. Yeah. You know what I mean? It'd have been yeah. great to do New York, but kids come first. Family. Kids, it's exactly it. Family comes first. So I made that decision, and I don't regret it. But those are the only regrets. Career. Career regrets. Got it. Yeah. Got it. What's the best memories? Uh, all of it. All of it? All of it. All of it. I can... Best memories are when you're talking with friends that you've worked with and you haven't seen them in a while. Yeah. And what's great about radio people and entertainment people, you always pick up where you left off. Yeah. yeah, you don't see you don't see somebody for ten years, yep. and I know what you're doing because I hear about you. I find you on Facebook. <laughs> the minute we're in together, it, we're still laughing at the same things we did ten years ago and stuff like it's like you never it, left. You never left, okay. and there, there's a that's the cool thing about entertainment people. Nice. Um, what should we expect a start a starting salary to be? 
for a disc jockey? Starting salary for DJs, realistically, about $500 a week. But that can go to a hundred million dollars, like Howard Stern makes. So, you know. <laughs> <laughs> depends on if you're Howard Stern or somebody else. You're right. And what is your best advice? Best advice: be passionate. Listen to the passion. You you have to have passion for this industry, whether it's TV, whether it's hosting, whether it's radio, whether it's voiceover. Whether it's set designing, if it, regardless of what you're doing, right. have a passion for it. If you have a passion for it, then it will never feel like a job. Right. And like I said, I've never had a job. And you have to have the passion because the passion keeps you going. Yes, sir. If you have that passion, and I mean passion to the point where there's nothing else I want to do, nothing else I want to do, then you'll make it. Got it. But as long as you think, you know, people always say, well, you better have something to fall back on. And the minute you think, okay, I've got something I'm going to fall back on, or I'm going to go, and yeah, I can always uh, I'll go and be a plumber, or I'm going to go work at Home Depot or something like that. Like, I'm good at math. Yeah, you're right, right. Uh, and, and I get that, because it is a tough business. But if you literally have nothing to fall back on, you you'll make it because you make it or die. Right. And you're going to make it. Yeah. You're going to make it. Well, that is all my questions. Thank all you right. so much, Mr. Dean Goss. Um, I don't think no one else to say, but thank you so much. Thanks for being with us. Tune in next time. Make sure you do like, and comment, and subscribe. Yep. No, this is going to be our our question for the week. What is your favorite Batman? Who is your favorite Batman? Okay, make sure to put oh, it down. Oh yeah. Who's your favorite in Batman? In the comments. It's, it's an inside joke. Don't worry about it. Just put it in the comment section. Who is your favorite Batman? Thank you guys so much for watching. Toodaloo and kisses too. And I will see you in the next video. Bye, guys.